welcome back to my channel today we are going to be making my most requested and best-selling tumbler this leopard glitter split skull tumbler it literally is my best-selling it's the one I've sold the most of so in this video I will be using a 20 ounce skinny from Griffin blanks and the first thing you're gonna do is you are going to section off your tumbler I am using electrical tape for this part because I am going to end up epoxying and electrical tape I find is the easiest to pull up with no ripping or tearing or ruining what you've epoxied and glittered than like painter's tape sometimes can rip and can make things a little bit more difficult. So you can measure this um, since this is a no taper cup it's easier to measure and split off. I like to eyeball it so I eyeballed it did it what I thought looked best and then went from there. Once you cut off the end, I recommend pulling the tape over and making tabs because it will make it easier to pull later. Once you tape off your tumbler, you are going to spray your base coat of spray paint. I'm using flat black here because the glitter I'm gonna be using is black. And once that is completely dried, you are gonna go ahead and add your very thin layer of epoxy so that you can glitter. Now remember when you are glittering a tumbler using the epoxy method, you want to do a very thin coat or else your glitter will come out wet looking. Now I was able to take five total milliliters of epoxy and glitter five cups that I was doing at a time. Once you have applied your thin layer of epoxy, I use counterculture DIY, you can apply your glitter. I am using basic blackboard by Peachy Olive Glitters. You want to make sure that your cup is completely covered. Um, what helps is base coating your cup similar to the color that you were using. So since I'm using black glitter, I base coated it black. And then make sure you get the bottom. I like to just throw the glitter on the bottom and it covers fairly well and I've had no issues. So once that is cured, you're going to go ahead and add your next layer of epoxy. This layer is approximately 20 milliliters. Um, any leftover I can use on the other cups, but you wanna go ahead and just cover the portion where the glitter is and make sure you don't cover too much of the tape. You are going to pull the tape once your tumbler has started to spin and cure a little bit, but if you end up forgetting, which sometimes I do, and your epoxy is completely cured, then um, using electrical tape is where it becomes beneficial because it is not going to rip or tear and make it harder to pull up. And I think that electrical tape provides a straighter line in a sense of a cleaner line when you do this. Make sure that you torch your epoxy as well. Um, you want to get out any of those little micro bubbles. And then this is the satisfying part. You just pull that tape like it's nothing. You're gonna let your epoxy completely cure before you move on to the next step. I'm using fast set, so in about two, two and a half hours, I went ahead and moved on to the next step, which is taking more electrical tape and then taping off that black portion. And then we are gonna go ahead and spray paint the other side of the cup. So go ahead and watch here. It's the same way I did it before, so I did speed up the video a little bit. So I went ahead and took some metallic finish Rust-Oleum gold and sprayed the other side of the cup completely. Now you can put painter's tape on the black side so that you don't get any overspray on that side, but you can also use alcohol to wipe off anything that may have oversprayed. So once you are done spraying and that spray paint has completely dried you're going to go ahead and do the same thing you did before and put a very 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 thin layer of epoxy so that you can apply your next color glitter 
I am using CC DIY Fast Set again. I use it on the entire process of this cup, except for the last layer I did use some artist resin. Then you are going to apply your next color glitter. I am using Tabby from Peachy Olive Glitter and it's one of my favorite golds. It's the one I use on this cup every single time because it has a mixture of like a champagne and a yellow gold in it and I really like it. It's probably one of my favorite golds that I have. And again, once your cup has spun for a little bit, you're gonna go ahead and pull off that electrical tape and then you're gonna continue spinning your cup until it is completely cured before we move on to the next step. Once you are ready to move on to the next step, you can take a two inch painter's brush is what I use. It's kind of a coarse brush, not a soft brush. And I brush the entire cup. I get all the excess glitter off that's on the black portion, all the excess that's on the other side. And then I went ahead and took a 120 grit sander and sanded that black portion. Just be careful not to hit that uh, raw glitter that's not covered by epoxy. I just did that so it was ready for when I threw on that next layer. So now we are going to add the leopard spots. I do already have a tutorial on how to hand paint glitter leopard spots onto your tumbler on my YouTube channel. I'll go ahead and link it below. So a lot of this part I'm going to kind of speed through because this was like an hour and a half long of footage and I didn't want this video to be too long. So you're going to take acrylic paint and Mod Podge and do 50-50, mix it in half, and then you're going to take a little paintbrush. Again, everything's gonna be linked below, and you're gonna paint your base spots. Now, when I do this tumbler, it does have a ombre of leopard spots. So the first glitter that I use is Cleopatra by Peachy Olive Glitters. The next one is Matisse, and then the next one after that is Espresso, and I'll show each of those as I go. So I do, cut the cup into thirds when it comes to the leopard spots. So I did the Cleopatra first, and then I moved on and used the same paint and Mod, Pod, Mod Podge mixture and did Matisse next, and then Espresso after that. Although I did add some of the brown acrylic paint to some Mod Podge to have a brown base instead when I added the Espresso glitter. So I went ahead and did that portion, and then once those leopard spots dry is when you're going to add the black portion of the leopard spots. You can hit that black portion of the cup and knock off any excess glitter. And then once the Mod Podge completely dries, you are going to add the black portion. So I went ahead instead of wasting any other paint or anything, I went ahead and just added some black acrylic paint to the brown to use that for the base layer of the black glitter. And then I took a very, very soft brush that I have that I do not put paint on. I don't use it for anything other than brushing off excess glitter because I want it to stay soft. I, as you can see here, very, very soft. Um, I use that to brush off any excess that I wasn't able to get off by tapping my tumbler. So I just go through, lightly brush off any excess, and then I go ahead and start adding the black part of the leopard spots. Now again, I'm going to speed through most of this. Cleopatra seems like it's hard to see in the camera, but in real life, um, it was easier to see. So um, the black portion really helps bring that out a little bit more. You're gonna add this to your liking however you want. Leopard spots don't have to be perfect because they're not perfect in real life. So um, once you do this, then we will go ahead and move on to the next step. I also want to add that I did use basic blackboard, which was also the same color that I used on the black portion of the cup to do the leopard spots. I like basic blackboard because it is a very fine cut black glitter that still sparkles under epoxy. So that is one of my favorite black glitters, that and Batman, both from Peachy Olive Glitters.
Now, once your leopard spots are completely dry, you don't want them wet when you do the next step, you're going to either go ahead and throw epoxy on there and call it a day, or you can spray a clear coat, clear gloss spray paint over top of it if you're scared that any of the glitter is going to move around. There's nothing wrong with that. I just moved on to the next step and added about 20 milliliters of epoxy, maybe 30, um, to the entire cup. I went ahead and hit it with my torch and once that was done I went ahead and sanded the edges a little bit with 120 so that I could add on my painter's tape because I'm going to be doing the distressed portion of the black half of the cup. You are going to line it up just like you did with the electrical tape before. You can make little tabs. Um, I did not on this one for some reason, but you're just going to cover up the gold. Now, again, if you do get any spray paint on the gold portion of the cup, you can just use alcohol, 91% alcohol to wipe it off. No problem. So when I spray paint, I learned this trick off of TikTok. I take these Dollar Tree cones from the Dollar Tree and set my cups on them because you're less likely to get spray on the inside. So I take that same metallic gold spray paint that we used prior and just spray the black side of the cup. You don't have to spray too much. I just sprayed a little bit and then once that dries, you're going to take your white spray paint and just spray the the middle a little bit because the whole cup isn't going to be covered again this can be customized to however you want to do it completely up to you now once that is completely dry we're going to go ahead and remove the painter's tape and then we're going to take goof off and 91 percent alcohol and some cotton rounds to distress it so i like to use goof off it's similar to acetone to completely remove the spray paint now, you might want to use gloves, especially if you have nails like I do, because goof off can kind of ruin your nails. Me, I live on the wild side, so here we are. Um, so, I use goof off to take off the main portions that I don't want uh, spray paint on before I move on to distressing it using the alcohol. Now, the cotton rounds, you can get Amazon, you can use the sponges, you can use whatever your heart desires. I just like the cotton rounds because it's easier, although make sure you're careful that you don't get the little lint from the cotton rounds everywhere. I then just up and down on both the top and the bottom, take it because I don't want a completely straight edge because I want it to be semi-distressed. So, Alcohol, 91% alcohol, is also great at taking away those streaks and cleaning up your spray paint. So when you do any types of geo tumblers or distressed tumblers, 91% alcohol is great at not completely removing the spray paint fast like the goof off or acetone, but can remove it enough to where it's clean looking. So with 91% alcohol on my cotton round, I'm going to go through and... Put a little bit of pressure as I'm going up and down on the cup so that I can kind of start removing the white spray paint without removing the gold spray paint. So see here, you can see the gold on the edges. That's, that's the look I'm going for. So I go through with that. I also am going to put a little bit of pressure so that I can have some gold or missing spots in the middle. And you're just going to do this until you get the desired look and then go over it with alcohol again to clean up all the excess spray paint that is in portions that you do not want. Um, try not to overdo it with the alcohol only because it still removes the spray paint, just not as effectively as the goof off. So here is our final distressed look. It's not going to look the same every single time. It's going to be different. It's unique. I love it. I love the distressed look. So now you're going to add your next layer of epoxy once the alcohol on there has dried a little bit, which only takes about 10 minutes. I used about 20 milliliters on this layer. I didn't need a lot. And then you're going to torch it. And then we're going to do our vinyl strip. So I did a quick little 
video on how I do my vinyl strips and I basically just take the square shape in Cricut Design Space, unlock it, and then set it to the desired size. If you want thinner lines, you can do it thinner. I did them a little bit thicker on this one because that's just the style of this one. But you can make yours as thin or as thick as you want. I recommend getting the German Edge whatever from 143 Vinyl. I'll link that down below because it is literally the best tool I've used to cut metallic vinyl. So now we have my sticker cow. You can find on my website um, where I use these. I have a bunch of different styled ones that I think would be fun to do this style cup based on the color scheme of those different skulls that I have. Um, this is definitely one of my most popular stickers that I have on there. Um, you're going to remove the backing, make sure that it's pressed thoroughly down. You can use a squeegee to make sure it's completely down, completely up to you. Um, once that is down all the way, I'm going to go ahead and add my vinyl strips to the edges. So I cut like 10 strips, but that's because I'm doing five of these cups, but you really only need two. So you do one on one side and you flip it over. I got this metallic vinyl from Create by Firefly. She has so many options for metallic and glitter vinyl. It is crazy. Um, one of my favorite places to get vinyl from when it comes to metallic and glitter and opal and all kinds of stuff. So there's one side that I laid down and then you're gonna lay down the next side and then I'm gonna move the camera so that you can see how I meet the edges at the bottom of the cup so it looks like it's one continuous line the best that you can you know, do. So you're just going to make sure it lines up, moving the vinyl pieces as needed, and then you're going to clip off the edge. So you'll see me do that here. Once you are done fixing the bottom of the cup, you're going to go ahead and cut off the excess at the top. I used an X-Acto knife that I have from Cricut. Honestly, it's one of my favorite X-Acto knives. You can also put counterculture quick coat down on metallic vinyl because sometimes metallic vinyl likes to stick up after you add epoxy. So I added my epoxy layer there. Next, what I did, because the next coat after this is going to be my final coat, I went ahead and sanded the edges with a 120 grit sanding block and sanded the entire cup. Um, this, I think, just helps me with the cleaning process at the end and helps me get a smoother finish when I just do a quick little sanding before my final coat of epoxy. After this, you're gonna do your final coat or two, uh, whatever you have left to do, and then you're done. Um, you're gonna clean the edges, clean the inside of the cup, and it's ready to go. Now I do wanna add, I did a cost analysis of this cup, and I'm gonna go ahead and write a blog with all the supplies as well, how much it cost me, how much you should sell these cups for, and what formula I use to find that pricing. I really think it's important to incorporate your not only your time, but the materials that you're using. So uh, go ahead and check it out. I'm going to link that below as well. I hope this helps. Please feel free to comment any questions. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you guys next time.